Mac, baby. Your boy, no luck, Mac, man. I ain't even peep. It's been about a month. Last time I dropped a video was August 25th. Today's September 20th. And I just peeped that yesterday. I was like, damn, it's been a month already? Bro, so starting today, I'm going to drop a video every single day for the remainder of the year. Feel me? All right. My computer battery just decides to let me know right now it's dying. But nonetheless, today's video, we going down memory lane, man. We going back in time to a period in New York City history called the Biggie era. The era of the Biggie. Not Biggie the rapper, but Biggie the jacket. So this is from about, hmm, I want to say 09, 2010 to about 20... I want to say about to 2013, 2014, because I'm pretty sure in the video it's going to dive into why it was for such a small time. But this was a time in New York history where niggas was still getting robbed for clothing. Like now, today, that's considered like bum shit. Like you, you took a nigga clothes off his body and now you wearing it. It's not, it's not, it don't like robbing niggas for their clothes, their sneakers, their jackets and all that type of shit. That's always been a thing in New York City. But in recent years... The current generation, like, bro, that's some bum shit. Like, nigga, let them get flying they shit, bro. Like, if it ain't money, jewelry, chains, maybe even a car, then niggas not, like, bro, like, that's mad dirty. Like, you don't know if they got bad bugs. Like, you don't know. Like, it's just everybody, just because they got nice shit don't mean they hygienically inclined. You get what I'm saying? They not the best of the best. So I like to say <clears throat> this was the last of that era. You know what I'm saying? The Biggie, the Mermont jacket. You see niggas coming down the hallway in school looking like fucking Teletubbies and shit. And once they got peeped, you never really saw niggas doly with a Merm. You never saw niggas doly. You will always see a group of niggas. Because if they was doly, like, you probably about to be a target. Like, somebody probably, probably about to run down on you. So you don't want to be doly walking around with a Merm. A Montclair, Prada jacket, not Prada jacket, it was it Pell, but that was then though, like, you know what I'm saying, now, you, know, you get money, you get money, like, you'll, you'll be a bum, like, like, if you, you rob niggas for their clothes, take niggas jewelry, niggas chains, all other types of shit is still okay, but if you take a nigga pants, take a nigga, a nigga shirt, like, bro, you don't know if that nigga showered today. You don't know the last time they probably even washed that shit. You don't even know who they got that from and how dirty that person could be. Long story short, ladies and gentlemen, don't steal people clothing. That's homeless crackhead shit. Ooh, hey, my bones breaking. Let's wake it up. Let's wake up. 420 squad. We in this shit this morning, man. We in this shit this morning. It's that 830 in the morning. My phone up. 30 in the morning, man. Without further ado, man, Super Wario, bro, take it away, man. Take it away. Their featured item, this rechargeable lighter. In case you run out of fuel, keep this around and it will solve the luxury of owning one. Now, or as the 2000s, initially, you would have some of these marmots, or merms as they called them, which the people were being robbed for. Eventually, they would become more affordable being more obtainable for less fortunate individuals. Uh -huh. It would even the playing field for a while and things would die. I felt like niggas used to jack it. It was like a band or something like that. Like, I never had a merm. I'm going to come clean. I never had a merm. Like, I wasn't going to wear something that would make me a target. You feel me? I got a flog. Bro, I was bagging bitches with shit out of thrift stores. Like, I, I was in my old school 90s bag. Like, I wasn't a merm nigga. I wasn't a pal nigga. That wasn't my vibe. I was more so Ralph Lauren, Rugby, Trues. I was more into shit like that. Merms, Biggies. One, <clears throat> for one simple thing, my body temperature in the wintertime, I overheat, bro. That's why I like, I, I could, I'd be good with a windbreaker in the wintertime. It could be dead, snowing, blizzard outside, and I'd be sweating if I'm walking. Like, my body produces too much body heat. So a jacket for me used to be, like, if the jacket was a puff jacket, 
bro, if I'm going to school in the morning, I'll be dumb hot, bro. I'll be sweating bullets by the time I get to school. I'll be sweating bullets. And that's just something I had to learn about my own body. So, like, you feel me? Down for a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 420 squad. Spark that shit up. Yeah, they. Always, <clears throat> something must fill the void. Some people have the need to stand out, stunt, or let material items prove their value. Sometime, it's just a hard worker trying to treat themselves to a little something nice. One thing we know is that the perception is that when you're wearing what's trending, you're in and will have a perceived status as such. When you're getting to it like that in the poor neighborhoods though, you're a come up and the wolves want to eat. So, back to the biggie specifically. Approaching the turn of the decade, the biggie model had gained traction. The cycle would restart and those had the money went to cop out. They were going for north of $600 and in some places, even north of seven. 2009 to 2014 would be filled I'm with complete. robberies all around the- I asked 600, 700 for the old jacket. Especially a jacket that niggas would potentially take from you. You feel me? Niggas who wore their biggies, like you wore your biggie all day. You don't take it off unless you letting your man try it on or some shit like that. You don't take that shit off, bro. So you gotta wear that big ass, hot ass, insulated jacket all day. And I'm talking in terms of school. Yeah, in terms of school, you niggas did not take them jackets off. City surrounding these coats, especially in the Bronx and Harlem, it was a trophy to take one right. from a rival or bystander. This is what niggas fact, looked like when I was in times, high school. This is what New York City looked like. Their neighborhoods wearing a biggie alone. Other than that, niggas with cades, all that. Like I said, niggas be mobbing. You don't mobbing see niggas or walking bowling. around in groups with multiple members wearing different colors of this coat. Sometimes hunting for others right. wearing one. BB sagging. You would even see young people with canes <laughs> with and the gray brim. Wow. How are so many young guys ending up with a Robocop foot so early in life? That was okay. just a combo though, a biggie and a cane to beat people and to support a limb from gun carrying. It was a stigma and when you seen that, hey, get out of there. One early story to hit media happened in 2011. Three suspects from the Bronx were indicted for murder after an 18 year old was struck by two cars trying to run away from them. After the story came out, it That's turned crazy. out to be a setup. Malik was 18 years old at the time when he found himself heading to the Sotomayor houses by the Bruckner Boulevard. Ooh. He and a friend was basically lured over there by two females, 15 and 17 years old. Once they got to the block, they were confronted by four individuals. The friend who came with Malik had a $150 true religion jacket on uh -huh. while Malik had on his biggie. Allegedly, they took the jacket from the friend and tried to rob Jenkins too, but he broke free. He took off, running to the expressway. As he tried to cross it along Bruckner Boulevard, he was struck by two cars, a Toyota Prius and a BMW. Damn. It was said that Malik had plans to be an engineer and wrote poetry. It was unclear why three suspects had been charged when there were four men attempting to rob him, and we don't know much of what came of this case. However, yeah, I, I, this I is never one example. Heard, I never even heard this story before. This is crazy. I never knew a nigga did that. You just knew niggas was getting robbed for those jackets, my nigga. That's a fact. A tragic case over material. From this point, there would be other material items people were being robbed and are assaulted for. Canadian gooses, Pele yeah, Pele leathers, goose. and monklers. Wait, <laughs> the goose? Nah, see, the goose was different because the goose was going for banding up. Monclairs was going for banding up. So I felt like niggas who had woven gooses and merms was niggas who was valid. Like, because a, a lot of niggas I went to school with, I, niggas ain't never take none of these shits. So I'm going to come clean. I'm, I'm respectfully standing and say, I don't remember a single nigga I went to school with who, who was like wearing biggies and shit. Came back, old niggas robbed them, or this happened or that happened. Like, niggas in my school was obviously valid. Like, I'm gonna come clean. So we're getting snatched off too. Another story takes place two years later on the Lower East Side, commonly known as LES. By 2013, a gang called the Block Boys had influence over the culture in the Barrage Houses. The 17 buildings are bounded by East River Drive to the east, East Houston Street to the north, Columbia Street to the west, and Delancey Street to the south. At one point, they were crips and often had disputes with rival gangs, such as the Latin Kings. Raphael, aka Tokyo, 16, was affiliated with the Block Boys from the Barrage Houses. 
Although he was an all-star and excelled at any sport, he enjoyed playing baseball and had been a part of the boys and girls club for five years prior to his death. He played shortstop and standing six foot one, he definitely had the potential to make it to the pros. He was known to have a sense of humor, which complemented his sometime boisterous attitude. He is remembered by his tall, lanky frame. Baseball T, I'm dead. Like, my son got the, the 20, that look like 2011 right there, 2012, the baseball T. Like, this is the hood fashion. I wasn't on hood fashion, bro. I was a Soho kid, bro. I was on to, like, Stussy and Hundreds and Huff. Graphic tees from the from the Soho little shops and shit, getting custom shirts made. Like, got into Supreme Bape. I was on Bape in the hood before niggas was on it in the hood. Like, I was on all that type of shit. Like, so I was good, bro. I got no robbery stories because niggas wasn't hip to what I was wearing yet. Like, niggas was not hip. Now in the hood today, you see Supreme, you see a bunch of Bape, you see all that shit. Nah. During this time, this is what niggas look like. Like, niggas wasn't wearing no Bape, no Supreme, no Vans. Like, this, that era came immediately after this era. Like, immediately after this Biggie Pell era, you see niggas. Because, like, the Soho niggas, like, the fashionable niggas who's wearing other shit started getting the hoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit was litty downtown. Like, those was the act, not active, like, in terms of niggas doing shit. But those was the niggas, like, just pulling the, the joints. Like, the joints wanted to hang out downtown. They wanted to go to the spots now, to the brunches and shit. Like, bitches wanted to get off the block. Like, But I'll say that's one reason. Like, if I, if you got me, well, I wish I still had my original IG. My original IG went all the way back to, like, 2011, 2010, 2012. Like, you will see what I mean, like, I'm wearing camo and shit like that, niggas wasn't, niggas wasn't on that, I'm wearing Reebok Pump before they, before they was re-released, I'm wearing, um, just vintage, vintage everything, throwback jerseys, this, at this time, Jordans, Jordans weren't the wave in New York City, like, Jordans weren't hot, like, wearing Jordans, those is, like, automatic sneakers, like, I'm gonna come clean. They, it was, it was, it was a kind of a, a, a racist thing. Like the only people who wore Jordans, like, were Mexicans. Like I'm gonna come clean. Because niggas wasn't wearing niggas was wearing Nike shocks. They were wearing phone posits. Gucci shoes was a thing at this time. Gucci shoes, Prada shoes, um, polo boots. Um. Uggs for shorties was the thing, Uggs. And I'm the nigga wearing Vans, you feel me? So, niggas just didn't know what I was on yet. Now, niggas, niggas is on now. But when I was in high school, like, bro, I'll show you my fucking yearbook. Niggas thought I was a fashion god. <laughs> in my school, like, I'm gonna come clean. Just cause niggas just didn't like the way I like, bro. I had gauges. Like I was on some skateboarder shit, but I wasn't a skateboarder at all. I just fuck with the fashion. Like you get what I'm saying? Like I was still regular New York nigga on the block downtown, moving and shaking, doing what I gotta do in this city. But the way I looked, I got yo. You from Cali a million times, but with all due respects, uh, Cali influenced a lot of my fashion sense in high school because I was hip to. Cali shit, like, I used to jerk in, like, 08, 09, so, like, you get what I'm saying? I'm already exposed to L.A. culture, what they dress like, what they look like, the the, the, the counterculture of the hood shit, like, black culture, the counter black culture, like, I was hip to that, so I never did this, like, had these type of shits. And his leadership quality. I was, the funny shit, I was just talking to my bro the other day. And I was like, he was he got a pair of tools and a pair of Louis V's and they both sky blue. And he was like, which one? I told him do the LV because the tools, Jordan tools remind me of this era when niggas was wearing this shirt, baseball tees with capri pants and shit. I'm like, oh man, these niggas look crazy. Man. Setting the tone for some of those around him. In Jan 
2013. It was a Friday night when the gunman approached, causing panic among a group of people gathered in a commercial plaza. People darted off in different directions. A friend of Tokyo's fled into a pizza shop and Tokyo sought shelter next door in a deli. Tokyo emerged from the store a few moments later, possibly to check the status of the gunman and whether he was still outside or not. Indeed, the gunman was outside waiting. He fired, striking Tokyo in the chest and sending him reeling back into the store. Damn. As Tokyo collapsed, he communicated to a few friends inside the store, indicating that the person who shot him might have wanted to steal his jacket. The teen was rushed to Beth Israel Hospital, but declared dead on arrival. He was the first youth murdered in the city that year. Police nice. said an investigation was ongoing. With the obey hat. Others who were gathered at- So you got the, I think he got a Hollister shirt. Niggas was wearing Hollister. Was store on American Eagle. Saturday wondered whether the shooting could have stemmed from a beef between Barrage projects and the nearby Rice houses. Apparently that had been some recent static and a fight had broke out a few days prior to the shooting. Days later, at least three separate fights erupted outside the province on a Lanza funeral home on 2nd Avenue, where hundreds of friends and relatives had gathered to mourn the slain teen. A few young dudes started tussling with each other outside the funeral doors, with one teen screaming, he shouldn't be here, he shouldn't be here. Several young women, sobbing hysterically, tried to break up the scuffle, but the fight spilled into the street and momentarily stopped traffic as police flooded the scene. The argument broke up, but then restarted a couple blocks away on Toasty Street, and then another scuffle started in front of the funeral home later. Allegedly, during the fights, someone was beat with a chain, as well as a frying pan. The first alleged thug busted claimed that all he did was supply the gun. I saw the guy shoot the kid, Timothy Montalvo, 16, said of the January 4th shooting of Tokyo in front of a church at 49 Columbia Street. Tokyo resisted demands to relinquish the $600 marmot and paid with his life, cops say. Montalvo was one of four kids caught on video surveillance entering and then leaving a nearby grocery store just before the shooting. Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly said the actual shooter was identified as Walter, 20, who was still being sought. The story was that this was possible jacket, retaliation I mean, over jackets being stolen earlier that evening. I mean, no, no that bullshit, this was possible retaliation him, over jackets with the being stolen earlier that evening. Allegedly, the violent was including the cousin of the teen whose coat was swiped, came to Columbia Street with intent on stealing Tokyo's coat to get even. As far as the rink, injuring two. Yeah, we gotta get to involving this story. a Bronx gang member, Corey Dunton. Three years after the murder, 19 at the time, Timothy Montal. Yo, what's up? In November of the same year, 2013, a similar situation would take place in Midtown, involving a Bronx gang member. Corey yeah. Dunton, a member of the Five Nine Brims, was accused of opening fire know about this one. at a crowded Manhattan ice skating rink, injuring. It was the weekend, Saturday, and he had posted on social media that he to the rink with an amp, which is slang for a gun. Hours after the shooting, the seemingly incriminating Facebook posts continued. As police closed in on his Bronx apartment, we will pause it right here. My man was at the skating rink that day, bro. It was an active day. I wasn't there though. Yeah, my neck kinda stiff, man. This, this damn bad. Feel all kinda lopsided. But check it. This day, now this is the case. Everybody know this case. Cause this is the ultimate case that killed the whole Biggie wave. Like, it was officially dead after this. Right? Cause the cops started running. I, the cops, you, you wearing a Biggie, the cops is on you now. They don't even care if you bought it. Like, they own you. Like, you stole it. So, now you don't even want to wear the shit no more. But this case right here, my mans was at the skating rink, bro. He was there that day. Him and a couple other people, I know. But one of my main man, my right man, my right hand, like, one of my close friends, he was there, bro. He was there that day. I ain't gonna speak on nothing more, but he was there that day, bro. Yo, let the, let the story keep going, because I don't want to keep speaking. 
Find out with a bang. Take my soul. The post went on to say, Fed's trying to kick down my door. It's over where do I go from here, man? Do I end my life? I don't know what to do. I effed up. After a 45-minute standoff, he was eventually apprehended at his apartment in the Hunts Point area of the Bronx. He was taken to the Midtown South Precinct House in Manhattan, after he was arrested, refused to answer questions, and demanded a lawyer. At first, he said a friend did it, but when heard that someone was actually injured, he took responsibility. His mother, sick on dialysis, had to hear her son apologize and tell her loved her, as this would be the end of his foolishness on the streets. The shocking incident happened just after 11 p.m. on the skating rink in the heart of the popular Midtown Park located at 42nd Street right, and 6th Avenue. Duncan allegedly demanded a 20-year-old man named Contreras to give up his $600 biggie. When the man refused, investigators said Dunton left the skating rink, returned with a gun, and fired several shots into the crowd. The intended target, Contreras, was shot once in the arm, but not seriously injured. A 14-year-old bystander, identified as Mara, was shot in the back and family members said it was possible he may never walk again. Witnesses of the harrowing incident took to Twitter to share their accounts and photos from the FYI, crime scene. if y'all ain't even peep, you know what I'm saying? The nigga made it home after doing all of that, bro. He made it back to his crib and went on Facebook, bro. Niggas in the city was baffled. Like, what? Bro, you just aired out Brian Park on 40 Deuce in the summertime. No, in the wintertime because this is the ice skating rink. You, you managed to get back uptown to the BX to your crib and go straight to Facebook, bro. Niggas was baffled. Like, huh? How do you do that? Why would you do that? If you was able to get home to the Bronx, nigga, you was supposed to keep going, get out of town. Well, you a criminal, nigga. I'm saying, I don't condone criminals. You know what I'm saying? The cops did what they were supposed to do. But it's like, my nigga, what the fuck? Why the fuck would you go on Facebook, my nigga? Why would you go home, my nigga? If you was on the train and you, bro, whatever way you, your former transportation, you was supposed to be out of New York City, bro. You tweet, like, this nigga bugged out. People just fell on the floor because they heard a gunshot and they had ice skating skates on, so they couldn't run. A witness told the New York Times he saw a man skate up to another person in the middle of the rink. Yo, he fake killed that vibe too, bro. Brian Park used to be the vibe, bro. Brian Park used to be the vibe. Niggas shooting up 40 doughs. Like, like, nah, it's still the vibe now. You can still go now, but it's like, I don't feel like people from uptown, like, we don't, we don't, we don't push down there heavy like we used to. I feel like we probably was the last generation of that. Now, like, people just go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people up from uptown, well, obviously, they'll go. But, like, how we used to go, like, deep, mad deep. Like, it was, it was. I don't think niggas doing that no more. I'm going to come clean. The gun and open fire. In total, three shots reportedly rang out, sending park goers running for cover, some of them wearing only socks. A young woman believed to be a victim's sister was heard exclaiming, my brother just got shot in front of my face. Yeah. The teenager told someone he could not feel his legs as he was lying on the ice. Yeah. Early Sunday morning, Mara's numerous friends and well-wishers took to Twitter to post messages of support for the injured young man. As for Dunton, he grinned, laughed and cursed at reporters as he was led by police to a court arraignment on the following Monday evening. F all you ninjas, Corey Dunton yelled, as he was ushered into a waiting car. The shooting was reportedly over a biggie jacket. But, according to the New York Daily News, the Bronx team told reporters, smirking, it wasn't over a jacket, it was over your mother, ninja. A source with the NYPD confirmed that the intended target, Contreras, and Dunton knew each other. In February of 2017, he was sentenced to 25 year in prison. Through his time going back and forth to court, he did write a letter expressing his remorse. Apparently the death of a friend, named Cheese, contributed to his string of violence and depression. Cheese had been murdered two years earlier at a party on Bathgate Avenue. After being kicked out of the party, he was persistent in getting his $10 cover charge back. In response, he was beaten and stabbed. 
but with this wouldn't say that this specific situation is justifiable there could be some underlying things that took place that we are not okay. privy to as well but this is a story of the marmot nowadays a, cars clean. have been more prevalent as far as niggas never look no deeper into that i guess that was on some if you know you know type shit i don't personally know boy so if it if it is like that then that's just that's just a terrible place to to to, to you know handle that at, for me you know. That's just not a good place. I'm a come clean. Robberies. And with every generations, the stakes grow higher too. Anyway, thanks for watching. And rest in peace to the young people that lose their That's a fact. Let them finish lives in these stories. Hopefully, you don't end up on here as a victim or as the Bar. 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 Damn. I got a trick shoulder, boy. All right, man. I'm about to get out of here. No luck, Mac, man. Drop some more. Drop some requests. I'm going to try to do reactions every day. I'm doing it every day. And I wanna, I'm going I'm to set it up to, like, a specific day, get a specific topic. Because it's different shit I be wanting to talk about, so... I'm up. We gonna get to this. We back. 420 Club.